So should you join a team or go solo? Find out today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to the WBNL podcast, your online source for finding balance, where you can align, connect, and prosper. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 180, and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, this is actually the big question, right? I think a lot of people um, go through this when they're in getting in the business, especially now when teams are so pro- uh, prevalent. Yeah, when you're getting in the business, but I think it's also consideration for all levels, you know, oh, is, sure. your, is your business stalling a little bit? Are there benefits to being on a team? If you, you know, are you a veteran trying to slow down a little bit? Maybe these are some things to consider, but we're going to really tip, break it down and go over the pros and cons of both, right? I love it. You ready to jump in? I am. Let's do this thing. You're listening to the WBNL podcast. Subscribe and give us a review on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to visit us at WBNLcoaching.com, where you'll gain access to all of our online courses and real estate agent freebies. We're always adding new materials, so subscribe to our newsletter and stay ahead of the game. So we're going to start with asking some questions about, I think, things you need to consider. Uh, and you got to do a little homework always, right? Yep. So the very first question and, and self-reflection, I think, is just you, you got to do this work and then you can make some decisions is, is being solo or joining a team good for you. And the very first question is, what are your goals? You know, what are your objections? Um, why, if you're thinking about joining a team, clearly we all get a real estate license and we can just go join a company and we can join a team and we can get all the, you know, look for certain things. But that's what I'm talking about. You got to get clear about what are you looking for? What's important to you? If depending on where you are in your career, if you're new, we'll get to that in a second. But if you're new, I know we pretty much know what everybody's looking for if they're new. And then you might need to update your skill set. Or as I said, you may be wanting to just tired of doing it by yourself. There's lots of reasons to do it. But the point is, I want you to sit down and go, if you're thinking about joining a team, why do you want to do that? Okay. And, and and take into consideration for each of you, you know, where are you in your business? Okay, so let's look a little deeper and look at... You know, Jan, I have a question just as a, a uh, kind of, um, you know, housekeeping thing here. When we're talking about joining a team, and this does this work for just joint partnering up with one other agent? Or are you talking about a larger team? Yeah, I think we have to have a different discussion about partnerships. Yep, um, that is, that is a, we could save that for another day or... You know, because um, there are benefits to doing that, just teaming up. So in this, you know, I can talk on that a little bit because it's another potential consideration. If you just want to, you have somebody that you like, uh, you know, you enjoy being around. uh, Maybe you've done some transactions with them or they're in your office and you might want to partner with somebody just like you do in any kind of partnership, business or personal. You find, you usually find somebody who compliments the things that you don't have, right? Yeah, back when I got um, into business and I was a, a newer agent, I actually partners up, I partnered up with somebody um, for a few years, actually. And uh, it does have a lot of the same pros and cons uh, to the whole business. So just, but, so just in case someone was out there listening that was thinking about that, I just wanted to make sure that they were on Well, the let's right just front. take another minute on that and then I'll, I'll kind of stick with the traditional team with the team leader and you're, you're clearly not the partner joining the team. But the idea of partnering up with one or even two other people is possible. I've had, I, I, have, I can think of one team, it's actually David Squire. Yeah. Back years ago, he was Senna Squire and Shore. And the interesting thing about the three of them is they all had unique uh you know, the strengths that they brought to the table and they were a perfect team together. So, you know, one guy was the graphics and marketing guy and David was kind of the get out in front and do the, the uh, close the transaction, get the listing. And Jerry still to this day works with, with uh, David and is more, you know, has been in the business a long time, has a lot of connections, but enjoys like working with buyers. So anyway, that that whole thing with partnerships is to is uh, again we could we could do we actually have a little bit of content. That's a huge chapter in in our content. I don't know if I really talk about it in the intro to team building. Maybe a little bit, but you know we do have a free intro to team building course that you should go check out um, if you're thinking about building a team and or partnering with somebody that could help you a little bit. But the whole idea there is that you're looking for, and this is the only thing I'll say. And it's kind of like dating. I used to joke with agents that would come in and say, "Hey Jan, you know Matt and I want to 
want to um, partner up and share our commissions and do all this. And I'd say, okay, awesome. Here's a list of things I want you to consider how you're going to do things, how you're, you know, like the yours, mine and ours, meaning is, are you going to split Matt's deals, the people that are in his database? And what about, you know, your database? And are you going to do things jointly together as a marketing thing? You know, you have to be clear about all these things. And then what I would tell people is, I want you to date first before you formalize a relationship. And it, I think it's great advice because it all seems good. And you go through that honeymoon period where every, you're excited. Everybody's working together. You know, two of you are working together. And then all of a sudden you start to realize, you start to get to know really the real person shows up. Yep. And then I've seen so many people start to feel like, well, I'm doing all the work and it's 50-50. Right. So you have to get everything in writing. So partnerships is, is different, um, yet another great way to enjoy doing the business, especially if you have a good partner. Exactly. Like we do, right? That's what, that's the whole beautiful thing there. All right, so let's, let's go into um, joining a, t a traditional kind of team here. Okay. And then, so if you are new or newer in the business, it's critical that you have to join a team or a company, right? And, and I think if you think back, if you're listening and you're new to the business or newer, or if you're a veteran like myself and Matt here, you probably went through this thought process. I want to know, Matt, if you did the same thing. I took, I personally chose a company that I didn't know anything about real estate. Yep. I was coming out of the army and I just needed to know training. I wanted support and I wanted, I was worried that I would screw up. So I, I was looking for a great training program and a company that had the tools and could kind of tell me what I needed to do and how to stay out of trouble. What about for you? Yeah, exactly the same thing. It was all about getting building the skill level was the main the main um, objective. But I'm gonna tell you, I also went for the company that had the best signs. There you go. Okay. Ah! All right. So uh, you know, it could be training, it could be tools, support. You may not be organized, and you need systems, and you're just all over the place. You don't know what to do. I think a lot of people want to be on a team for all those reasons. Plus, um, leadership. You know, coaching and mentorship not being, it's really hard to do it by yourself, you know, the camaraderie and then leads. A lot of people think it's hundred percent for leads. And then I find that, you know, we've been doing leads and, and, and our teams and stuff and not everybody really wants to work the leads, you know, so they, what they want is clients, you know, and it, it, what comes with leads is work and follow up and prospect, you know, and well, that's with to... anything. you don't know what you don't know, right? <laughs> exactly. So you think that's going to be the thing that you want and you get in, you mm -hmm. actually have to do something and you have to actually, you know, incubate them. Oh, no way. You know that. So absolutely. So if let's, let's look at the next thing that I had here. So some, again, if we have, we always have sh our show notes are always over at WBNL coaching and click on the podcast tab. Um, you, if you're listening and you want to see some of the stuff that we're talking about here, we have notes and so forth. It's on our YouTube channel, right? Yep. So we try to make our YouTube a little bit more interesting, but if you're an audio listener, hopefully you're getting this as well. So you might be licensed for a while. Maybe you want to reboot your business. I mean, I see that a lot too. It's like, you know, it's been a tough couple of years for folks. If you're not a listing agent, if you're a listing agent, you're doing great. A lot of people are having the best year ever if they can get the listings. Right. But if you're working with buyers, you're super frustrated, you know, or if you even find buyers and buyers are frustrated and fatigued right now because they're losing so many offers. The market has been so crazy with not enough inventory all across the country, not enough inventory, high demand. And we're continuing into that space, even though I think things are starting to get a little bit better. We're starting to see some price reductions. Um, East Coast and West Coast, I'm seeing that. And, uh, you know, and there may be, as I mentioned, you may be an experienced agent who wants to be part of a team. So just you have to do this analysis of what is it. And if the first thing is I want leads, I, I think that's a huge mistake. Okay, because you, you want to be able to assess what it is that you're lacking and what do you need. And then this is the most next important thing that I got to say to you. All teams are not equal. Just because somebody says they're a team, um, it it's not. Can you go to the next thing, Matt? All teams are not equal or they're not prepared to have team members. And this is why we have a coaching, um, majority of the coaching clients that I have had over the years have been like, you know, I jumped into this coaching, this team thing too early. I'm busy. I have leads. I have buyers coming from my listings and I just thought I could get a buyer's agent and help. Well, it doesn't work out that way because why people want to join a team are the things we just talked about. In my opinion, most people want to join a team for structure support, accountability, yes, to be able to get some additional business, but also to learn how to do the business, plug into that team leader systems. But if that team leader 
is chaotic and disorganized. Mm-hmm. Um, the person jumps on and then what they were looking for, but maybe they didn't articulate it, what they were looking for is not there and then they bounce out again. So uh, if you are a team leader, you know, our last episode 179, we talked about the pros and, ta- and cons of building a real estate team. So you can go back and check out that episode or it's on YouTube as well uh, because I, I walk through with Matt what are the pros and cons of building a team and if and it, it kind of points out what you need to have in place so that you can attract people to stay with you right mm-hmm. so um so just be super aware of that and then that brings us to interviewing so when you're clear about what you're looking for it's super important that you have some tools or you want to be with a team that does x y or z uh, or you're just wanting to be able to parlay their brand and their market share whatever those things are now when you sit down to interview you need to ask the team leader, whoever the hire, the recruiter is, the questions, you know, what kind of systems do they have in place? What kind of, what's their value proposition? Are they providing anything to you? One of the benefits of joining a team is a lot of times you can reduce your expenses because you're plugging into maybe a website and a CRM and other things that the team has that they are, that they basically are customizing for you to use and you're continuing on with their brand, right? So make sure you ask those questions. All right, so let's keep moving on here and we'll talk about um, what are the pros then of joining a team? Well, obviously some of the things that we just talked about, right? So I, I really am beating this dead horse when I keep saying, when I say the pros of joining a team right now, I'm making the assumption that the team that you're wanting to join is actually ready <laughs> and set up to support agents, okay? So what are those reasons? Again, leadership and mentoring. I honestly feel this is the number one reason that people really want to be in a team environment, uh, which then follows on with this structure and this accountability um, you know, because it's just very hard to do it on your own. I find most people are not entrepreneurs. They didn't have a business before they got into real estate. They were in a, they're an employee mindset. I was this way too. Um, they had a job nine to five or whatever, eight to four thirty, whatever your time frame is. And you would go to work and you knew what you need to do. And then you knew how much you got paid. Now, it's you Inc, right? You start a business and with real estate and you've got to have, you have to know what to do every day, what, what to go do. And, and by the way, we have some great videos on that. Uh, just posted, um, just our most recent as we're recording this, just posted today is um, a video I just did on uh, the success agents daily schedule, what your daily schedule and day and perfect week needs to look like to, uh, to have success in this business. So we go over some of those things. And then, of course, I think another pro is in a great team, you're you're leveraging their brand, their success, their marketing. So you're Jan O'Brien of the, you know, whatever team. And if that if that team has a great reputation, then you instantly give you that credibility, right? To, it's great any time, but especially if you're a brand new agent. Don't Absolutely. Right. And, and to that point, when you're a brand new agent, you can say, you know, you get the power of me and my team here right. because this is how our team is structured. And all of us, my team leader, my manager, we're all going to be looking at this and this is how we market. And so you have that and you're not on your own trying to figure that out. And then the tools and systems, as I mentioned, what are they? You know, some teams just really have it dialed in. They have great marketing. This is what we do for listings. This is what we do for sales. Here's our follow up for our database. Just everything that I believe you have to have in place like here's our listing presentation all of that so these are the these are the major pros um additionally reducing your expenses as i I mentioned advertising marketing tools right you're gonna learn and gain confidence especially if you're around other positive people like-minded people and i think it's important to join a team that matches your value system as well like they're in alignment, you're in alignment with what their team leaders doing, how they conduct business. You'll get that camaraderie of you and whoever else is in the team. And it just really supports you. You know, you just feel like you're not an island. You're, you have, you can learn from other people asking questions, you know? Uh, and then, as I mentioned, you can leverage it with the, the benefit when you go out with your clients, um, that it's not just me. When you hire me, you get my whole team. And then, of course, there are opportunities for leads. So if you're with a team and they're a good listing agent, then open houses are the key right now. 
people are out looking. Open houses are always great, right? So Absolutely. So open houses on team listings, for example, maybe the team does have an opportunity to get leads. You may have to go through some kind of a qualifying process to get them or, you know, and every team has leads differently. Some are just getting Zillow and they hand you just cold leads. Others are developing them through an ISA. And of course, that's all going to vary with teams and then the structure is going to vary. So to me, those are the big pros. So that brings up the cons for joining a team, which also are possible pros for going solo. What do you know? So let's talk about the negatives, which then may support just being solo. So the biggest one I see for agents that get that feel like they are want to kind of do their own thing eventually is you're not branding yourself for the most part. I've seen a few teams where it is about that helping you brand. It's kind of what we're doing with our team in, in Vegas now. It's all about branding them and not us, but that is the exception to the rule. You it are is, generally, absolutely. you're on the Matt Emerson team is all about, and, and the team name is generally, and if it's not in your state yet, trust me, it's coming. How it is in California, Nevada, out here in Florida, it's all about, you have to have a surname at least, or first and last name and team or group because you have to identify with the public that there's a real person. So we can't be the best real estate team. You know, we have to be Emerson and O'Brien team, uh, generally speaking. Now it's different in different states, but that's the trend I'm seeing. And I think that's gonna change. So don't go put a ton of money if you're a team leader into branding some crazy name when you might have to change all that. But the point I'm making is if you join a team, you're not branding yourself, you're branding that team and you're contributing to their brand. Now you're getting a benefit from that, as we just mentioned, if you're sure. new, newer in the business and you may like that and you may like to be on a team for a long time. Another thing, if you're all about recognition, unless the team leader is really good at turning around and recognizing everybody on the team, companies recognize the team leaders. So if you're going, if you're with a big box franchise and they say the, O'Brien Emerson team, then we're going up there getting those awards and y'all are not getting those awards. But on the O'Brien Emerson team, we would be bringing them up on the stage with us and making sure they got those accolades with us. But that, but obviously commonly it's the team, not you. Okay. Uh, if you want to be in charge, a team <laughs> is not for you. <laughs> no. If it you if you are the you know high driver high you know high I high D person that's in uh you know like in the disc personality then you know you want to be your own entrepreneur then you may you know you some people do like that do join teams I tell team leaders be careful hiring somebody that's a lot like you there may be some benefits for the short run but they're just trying to figure it all out and then they're going to go just do what you do and that might work out okay for you you may be okay helping other people get better but. You can know what I mean. And then another possible con here, which would be a pro again, if you're doing your own thing is, depending on the structure of the team, a lot of teams want the listings always in the team leader's name. So you're never really getting any uh, statistics in the MLS. Now there are oh, some yeah. states where you can have a co-lister. Um, I don't see that everywhere. I see it out here. And I think we maybe switched to Nevada and maybe California has it. Those are the main ones I'm familiar with. But a co-listing would help, but um, the team leader may say, you're just a buyer's agent or, you know, you refer the listings because we have this massive marketing machine and you're going to get 25% referral, whatever the deal is. So be aware of that. And then um, the next one is, uh, the next big one is with when you're by yourself, okay, if you're a, if you're a solo person, you're just dealing with you, right? Mm -hmm. And that can be great if that's what you like. Um, and a reason me, you may want to be around a team is that you want that camaraderie, you want other people, but with people comes drama sometimes, right? And personality conflicts. Matt, we've seen it again and again. We're working oh, yeah. with big teams and just personality conflicts and it's human nature. So, you know, you had mentioned earlier, you, you know, regarding uh, just a partnership, making sure you have things in writing. It's exactly the same thing with the team. You need to make sure that you have your deal in writing, because when it comes time to get paid, you want to make sure that, you, you know, everything is on the up and up. And we've experienced that over and over and over again, too, in our careers as well. So, I mean, it's, you know, uh, getting things in writing in a team is Oh yeah, vitally important to uh, put your business hat on. Right. So. Exactly. Because that's where a lot of the drama is going to come from. Mm -hmm. So. So, I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, you can really luck out and I mean, we have a great team, oh my God, all of yeah. our folks get together and, you know, so it can be like that, but we have also seen where there's conflicts. Okay. So point being is there's always pitfalls, right? So don't be naive and walk into something, think it's going to be, you know, unicorns and rainbows when it often <laughs> is not.
So, all right. So those are some of the pros of of uh, being solo, which would be you know the cons of being on a team. And then, so let's talk about the cons of going solo. All right. So they they all kind of are interchangeable, but I just broke it down this way so that we can keep kind of driving this home. So the big one when you're on your own is you've got to set up everything. Okay. You've got to get your own systems in place? Are you going to use a website? Are you going to learn your CRM and your website? I think you have to have these basic tools. You need to get a listing and a buyer presentation. Hopefully your company has a lot of that for you uh, as well, but you're going to have to put all that up and get it running and understand it and learn how to do it. You're going to have the associated marketing and advertising costs that go with marketing your listings. And so you're, you're you know, you're giving up some of your, you're sharing your commission with your team and in some cases your company when they provide some of these things for you so that's one of ways to look at the way your commission structure works right if you're going to do it on your own you got to figure out how you're going to lead generate how you who is what's your niche going to be what's your how are you going to attract new clients and you got to put all that energy into doing that prospecting and then how do you follow up which ties into the systems again and then eventually if you really get busy with being you know uh and you're, you're just really overwhelmed, then you have to start thinking about running your business like a true business and hiring an administrative assistant or maybe a virtual assistant or TC. Um, so, so, but those are the positives for someone who wants to be the entrepreneur. So those are the cons if you don't have those skill sets, right? Yeah. Uh, the, you know, and even if you are on your own, you, you are going to be spending more money. But one would argue that you're making more money if you have a higher split. So maybe it's a, it's a hundred percent, you know, I don't know if it's a, a wash, but you get what I'm saying. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for and what you want. Really, at the end of the day, um, it's about don't jump into things, right? Th think about your career and, and kind of do a little analysis and see what you're actually looking for, right? Because as we always say, you need to begin with the end in mind, right? So don't jump in, do some homework. And you know what? You may want to jump into a team environment for a while to get that confidence and that uh, experience level and then go out and do it on your own and say, thank you very much, team leader. And the team leader get something from that too because th you've shared commissions with them and so i think it's a nice cycle uh, of things so I, I definitely think there's benefits in a big way sure. for new and newer agents or any agent who's just needing you know not a, you know obviously if you're a successful real estate agent you're not going to join a team you may partner with another team team leader to, to kind of come full circle to where we started today but it, we're, you know who you are if you're thinking about a team versus going solo and you may start with a team as, a, as, I'm, as I'm suggesting because I do think with the right team you can really energize your business and you can get up and rank quicker in most in cases that are if you have a team that's supporting you than if you were trudging along trying to figure it out on your own. And you know, at the end of the day, you might always kind of be worried about, you know, leaving a team once you're on the team, but just know that those team leaders know that they are going to be cycling through agents, uh, you know, throughout the career of their team. As we mentioned last week in 179 about actually building a team, that is one of the parts of the team building that you need to know that you're going to do, that you're going to be losing agents to go out solo. So, you know, they're expecting it. So don't, don't fret on that one. So Matt, let's talk about that. If, if uh, today's uh, episode is is got anybody that's newer and newer listening or you were compelled to listen to it and uh, just make sure you go and check out we have so much free training over at wbnl coaching um we have a module one of our real estate sales builder course which is our foundational core training program that you can also check out but you can check out the whole first module which is the fundamentals of real estate where we talk about all these key things here about what you have to do to get up and running. And it includes the business plan, goal setting, all of it. Everything you need to really get up and running. Whether you're on a team or uh, doing it solo, I think it's the things that would help you. Um, and then we have, uh, we have, uh, we're launching a, well, we've had it for quite a while, but we're rebranding our Facebook group. So I really wanted to uh, let everyone know today that Dream Builders, um, we're upping the game on what we're going to provide in that private Facebook group every every month. So if you want to join our Dream Builders, it's Dream Builders WBNL Coaching, right? Is that all you have to do, Max? Just go to Facebook and you can type in Dream Builders WBNL. Actually, you can join the group that way, but let me tell you something. If you go to oh, our website, way. if you yeah, go to our website you. and you go to our Dream Builders tab, which is the very first button at the very top oh, of the website, yep. if you if you click that button and sign up right there, you will get access to our all of our free courses. So you'll get our business plan course, our fundamental agent fundamentals course, our intro to team building, and what's the fourth? Oh, social media 
media and online presence, you'll get instant access to all four of those courses just by filling out that form. And then when you join the group, you'll have access to all of our other free downloads as well. So you're getting about, gosh, yeah, I think there's about four to, uh, no, 12 things uh, right there with a couple clicks of the button. Um, or, you know, if you don't want those free courses, you can just go sign up on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is there where, you know, you're going to get all that instantly. So you don't have to sit and download it all. Right. Sign up each time, as Matt said. Plus, we're going to start in October a monthly live training. Uh, and this first training is going to be about video, five easy ways to incorporate video into your client and lead follow up. OK, not not to be a YouTube star, which, by the way, we do have a YouTube course that will be, I think, launching next week. Uh, yeah. So sometime in September. Exciting. We hope it's going to be next week. We're ready to go pretty much, aren't we, Jenna Brown? I think it's ready to go from yeah. what I just I just got the update that everything is in the course now. So It's an awesome course. Cosmo mm -hmm. Robbie is the uh, instructor on that course. I'm going to tell you, I mean, we've talked about him, and actually he was on a few times in the last uh, the last month. Uh, wealth of knowledge, the kid is always, it's fun to say he's a kid. Yeah. Well, I don't know how much he'd appreciate that, but I like saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, he is always on to the next thing, learning what's going on and what's the latest thing. He learns things before people even know it's something new to learn. I don't know. I've learned a ton and I continue right. to learn. We we're on a call with him the other day and I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know those three <laughs> things. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I learn something every time as well. So. Absolutely. It's on the cutting edge and that's what you get. He'll be updating the course. So once you purchase it, it'll be, um, you know, any updates or it's, it's your course for life. So good stuff. So any special deal for our, our very awesome listeners? Yeah. Uh, until, the 15th, until the 15th of September, if you go to our show notes over at the WBNLpodcast.com, you will get a special deal. Just enter that coupon code in and you will get the deal for our sales builder course, which is a 12 module 100 and I uh, over 100 documents and I forgot how many videos now there's a crazy <laughs> number of videos in that training course which is more than just the fundamentals of real estate it really tells you and teaches you how to build a, the foundation that you're going to be able to utilize forever in your career so if you're a new agent newer to the business or just need a little tune up uh, or a veteran we, agent who never put your systems in place well, so you get a lot you of know that what? as well hate to say it but probably a lot of you out there. That's, That's just true. the way, kind of just the way that works, right? Because mm -hmm. things change so much. So it's crazy. But you can get all that over at WBNLcoaching.com. That's it. Well, all right. All right. So anyway, like I had mentioned, we, you, our show notes always over at uh, WBNLpodcast.com. Um, this was episode 180. Jenna Bryant, oh. I have a question for you as we wrap up today, you went to a conference in Orlando uh, a week or so ago. We didn't really discuss, you know, what you picked up from there. Any, any gems that you picked up in the conference? It was, it was good, but it was kind of a weird hybrid. I think there were more people They did it virtually and live. So the second day it was pretty good. And I went to a couple great classes, uh, you know, networking and so forth, but um, nothing groundbreaking. I learned a little bit about Florida law. Right. Um, went to a class on YouTube and I'm like, okay, we already know all that. So for me, ah, not, yeah. <laughs> other than the opportunity to network with other agents and, uh, and see Orlando, uh, you know, which I would prefer to go back when you guys are in town so you can really show me the whole universal slash Disney experience. So, yeah. which is the real real estate, mm -hmm. um, well, the real thing, the real reason to go to Orlando. What was it like as far as attendance goes? What you think it was a little light because of COVID? Yeah. No, no COVID, no COVID in Florida, Lord knows. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I think it was pretty good considering you know comparative to other non-COVID years, obviously right. way down because they because of things surging, they went to both formats. You know, so right, right, you know, they had it. So some people were, they had everybody wearing masks. Most people were compliant. They had to keep reminding oh. people put their masks on. Yeah, that's um, but, but at the classic, right? So. Um, I think it was pretty well attended. The second day seemed to be, it was kind of weird. I think a lot of people came in the second day because it's a classic convention for a state where if you're involved in um, the, the, you're in the leadership, then they had events before and after and then the parties and all that. So I thought it was lighter attendance the first day and then the second day, much bigger because the, the trainings were filled. Right. So it was good stuff. It's always good to Always to, good to, to network, learn. right? Absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, that's a wrap for episode 180 of the Wandering Without Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. You know where to get the show notes. And just remember, everyone, stay safe out there and be forever wandering, but not lost.